Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Uh, I'm Rex. And we're drinking a giant middle finger of a whiskey today. Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm yeah. <digging. laughs> so here we go. We're drinking a uh, Spring 44 a whiskey single, from Single Malt Whiskey, Colorado. Colorado. All right. This is um, straight up a wine. gift from Leah Ashley and Gordon Syrup, but we're gonna call it Leah Ashley. Leah Ashley, you magnificent bastard. And that's because we already made Gordon a magnificent bastard. So fair enough. Um, that's a wine bottle, man. It is. This is just a straight up wine bottle and even a wine. Yeah. Top. Yeah. Super whiny. So this is Spring 44 Distillery. Mm -hmm. It's some uh, friends. They used this spring water way back in the mountains, in the Pine Mountains, right. Buckhorn Canyon. They, they uh, growing up, used to drink out of it, and they decided, let's make some whiskey using this spring water. Sure. Now, this is in I'm interesting. Yeah. Because, ooh, I can smell it from here. This ooh. is heavily peated ooh, barley. Ooh, it is. Ooh. And man, you can smell it from, as I opened wow. it, it smells like tires. Tires? Like a tire store. A little, yeah, okay. A new oh, tire store. Man, the nose on this. So it's, Woo! it's tires. This is, it's tires and roses. This is lively, man. Tires and roses. So they said this is. Uh, you know, roses look like they would smell beautiful, but they just kind of smell okay. But it, it's a very planty kind of smell. Yeah, this is a heavily peated barley mixed with a couple other kinds of barleys, aged in used American oak and finished in sherry casks. For 21 days. Interesting. So used American oak. Mm -hmm. This is not peatiness that I would typically ascribe to like a scotchy peatiness. This is a it's peaty, but it's also a very different kind of animal. It's not stereotypically those peat notes. It's uh it's like the high end of all the peat. You don't get the low. Wait, I just got a I just got something back there. What was it? <laughs> oh, oh, it was, um, it was... I hope this tastes really good because it smells really interesting. What's that corn, roasted corn at Trattoria that we always used to get? Uh, Remember oh, the cream corn? Cream corn. Uh, it but tastes like, but it, but it, it was roasted cream corn. That's so the key. I hate cream corn. Right. But this place down the road used to do a roasted cream corn and it was pretty magnificent. And I just got a note of that in here. Mm. Oh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of excited about this. I, I'm a little nervous. I to take a no, sip. That's where the excitement comes from because... Uh, it, it may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just been. It's 50 percent alcohol. Maybe it's just been my experience. But a lot of the American whiskeys that I have had that have quote unquote peat in them, and they smell really vibrant. Well, the peatiness is always kind of taking a backseat to some to some other things. The the peat isn't the hero. It's not carrying the whiskey. You got to go hunting for it. This thing, front and center. Yeah. Full mast. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your flow at full mast. <laughs> If you know what I mean. You had me at full man. <laughs> but the peat is the centerpiece for this whole thing. Whoa! That tastes as dramatic as it smells. Woo! <laughs> oh, you know? God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know what it makes me think of? No. The three amigos. Very. When they go to the bar and they're like, we'll take three beers. And the guy's like, we don't have beer. He goes, what do you have? We have tequila. <laughs> What's that? He's like beer. <laughs> and we'll take three of those. They line them up. They take a sip. And it stays with and you. And then they all three go. Ah! <laughs> really? So the, what's, what's interesting is what? the clingy bit. Have you gone back a second time? Yeah. You went back a second time. I got to move a little. Hold on. What? Hold on. You went back a second time. Yeah. Wait for a while. And then okay. the cleanliness, the only thing that's left is like a nutty note. Mmm. Okay. It is. Oh, uh, yeah. Like sunflower seeds. Yeah. Which ironically is what this picture made me think of is sunflower seeds ish. So I think this is going to be the kind of whiskey that people are either going to love or hate. Oh, I can see people. This is a brimstone category. Yeah. Where some people are like, oh, yeah, ah, and other people. No, don't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, let me ask you something about the water. Woo! So they went to basically this remote place it's to get natural this, spring to get this special water. Two and a half mile Jeep trail after an 11 mile dirt road. Okay, to my point, this is a big pain in the ass to get to this Yeah, water. no kidding. Uh, water can absolutely make 
a meaningful difference, mm -hmm. but with like the state of technology and you can get water trucked in and right. it's been purified all these different way levels, is the water uh, excursion, the adventure they're going on, more beneficial to the whiskey or to the story that goes into how I think put... it's probably both. Yeah, you think it makes a meaningful difference to the end result of the whiskey? Yes. All right. Uh, but the thing is, yes and no. Mm. I think that for the majority of people, uh, could not tell the difference between uh, limestone well water and uh, rain collection water in the end product. Mm. But there's a small percentage of people that would be able to pick up on that. You said sunflower seeds. I can't not taste sunflower seeds now. This is. But remember when you were a kid and you got sunflower seeds for the first time and you didn't know you were supposed to crack the shell and spit out? Right. And instead you just went chomp, 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 and you took about 10 minutes to try to chew through the exterior seeds. Yes. One of my favorite. That's what it tastes like. One of my favorite memories of my granddad. <laughs> He's a total good old boy. Yeah. Texas and Oklahoma. And we took him to eat sushi one time when he was still alive. He's never had sushi before. And you know, you get uh, edamame. Yeah. And they, they oh no! Him, they got him in the shells. Oh no! They got him in the, the husk things, whatever. Uh, so he gets an edamame, and he's t he tells stories left and right. That's why I'm immune to your stories. He can tell yeah. a story like a thousand times better and more interesting than you. Ah, I'm like the bar has been set too high. You never had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so he got finished telling the story, and he grabbed a piece of edamame for his big finish. Grabbed it with the flourish and. Then, and he was so intent on not ruining the story, the result, that he chewed through that some bitch because he knew as soon as he bit it, this is not what you're supposed to this do. This is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody else noticed. And I sat here watching him chew, watch him chew this edamame down, like every single bit of it, like it was <laughs> totally on purpose. <laughs> so that's a storyteller, dude. This you I'm, don't step on the ending. I'm gonna pour another dash, like so and add some water, and see what happens. Mm -hmm. This so, is some, this is. A, a struggle. This is serious. Tires and sunflower seeds. Those are the two prominent notes. <laughs> Tires, Tires and sunflower, sunflower seeds. seeds. All right, I'm adding just a dash of water and that's see a, what that does to it. That's a funky adventure. Hmm. You know, it doesn't taste as spiky as the 50% would make you think mm -mm. it would. It's smoother than that. It is. It, I mean, oh, hey, honey just showed up. I added a dash of water and now it smells like more honey. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, big difference. Yeah. And that was with this much water. You want to try it? Sure. Isaac Kaisley, Kiesley. Uh, hey, berries. Fellas, longtime Whiskey Tribe member and Irish whiskey connoisseur. Mm. Uh, by the way, if you're curious into the, what the Whiskey Tribe's all about, whiskeytribe.com, that's whiskey with an E. Mm -hmm. I recently lost a friend who died as a result of alcohol. He was still in college, and in his honor, I am doing a dry period. Mm. Hoping you bastards could raise a glass of water in his name, Jack. And thank you again for bringing to light the importance of not letting something we all love become a problem. Cheers. He's referencing the quarterly challenges that yes. we do. And man, it sucks. It's always uh, sad to, to hear whenever a friend passes, especially uh, when it's something that could have been prevented. Yeah. yeah. Or at least it feels preventable. Mm. To Jack. Jack. Okay, so that's not the water where you go into the mountains in a jeep and no, this is but this is limestone water from Kentucky. Okay, don't read that second one yet. We'll end with that one. Sure, this is a hero whiskey. You know, there's background whiskeys, hero whiskeys. This, yeah, is, this one. is not a background whiskey. This is going to get everybody's attention. And I'm you... gonna add another dash of water because the water really, um, I came around. Mm -hmm. So now, after about four or five sips and a dash of water, I'm starting to get it a little. I finally got. Acclimated to the tires? <laughs> no, I finally got um, a wood note in here. In most whiskeys, you can find the wood fairly easily. This one, I had to go hunting for wood. Mm. Just like you do. Two dashes there. of water. This one really finds itself. Mose Chung. Hey, Daniel and Rex. Just wondering what happens when you transition from Springbank to Ardbeg. Yeah. And finally, Kalila. Does it change all your tasting notes, is what he's saying. I'm not going to do that right now, but I am going to do the equivalent of it with this one. Let's go see how it compares to the uh, emotional struggle of brimstone. Sure. Good on you. Finding something for me to partake in. Uh, does the rush from total brutality to acceptable violence destroy the ability <laughs> destroy the ability to enjoy the complexity of each 
succeeding whiskey violence. because it now is so tame and friendly? Or does it open more nuance in the nose palate and finish of said whiskey's nose? Yeah, right? I don't know where the brimstone is. So you do know where the Springbank, Ardbeg, and Kalila are. It looks like I'm trying to mooch, but I'm really trying to help Daniel. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Don't gotcha. <laughs> 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 but here's the thing, just thinking in terms of uh, searchability. Yeah, those things are gonna get searched much, more. Much, much more than this. Much more than this. Yeah. Now that's one I struggle with, brimstone. Mm -hmm. But it's a very different direction. That's very honey now. It's very honey. I remember that being like just burnt charcoal and. And dude, that tastes really good all of a sudden. I mean, it tastes like Balcanis for sure. Wow. That's a perfect wow. example that your gateway into something is going to completely alter your experience. Yeah. And um, I was reading uh, some comments in the, the community earlier. Uh, it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be something that you had within the last hour. Mm -mm. Right? It could be the last thing you had. Yeah. Your last memory of a whiskey. So between the two, you're just going to sit down and drink something. I'm, I'm gonna go back to Balcones. Yeah. Yeah. Although this one is lighter and a little more floral now. Mm-hmm. But it's still got that sort of rubber. There is tinge to it. There is. You know what it is? I keep trying. It's like you filled up a rubber glove. My brain keeps whiskey, going. Poked a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of it. My brain keeps going to like. There's like a cheese funk here. Mm, yeah. But it's like a sharp, not stinky cheese. Mm -mm. Just like a sharp. Um, Parmesan, Parmesan, or uh, mm. cheddar or something. Uh, Jim Nelson, hoping you'll get this. No, wait. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is how we end. Now, you guys, we have a lot of Canadian viewers, and we have a lot of Canadian students. Yeah. And Steve Ray, and we've, uh, and donors, and the whole thing with Humboldt, and the Broncos. Mm. And so uh, we're going to end this episode. Honor, do you honor the them. team members who lost their lives from the Humboldt Broncos? Uh, from Saskatchewan. Yeah. It's a horrible accident um, going going on there. Yep. Changed the whole town. Mm. Uh, thank you guys for uh, sticking with us. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's hearts. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with, with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, drop a question or comment down below. <laughs>